Hey everyone, it's Anthony from Pretty Printed here. In today's video, I'm going to do something a little bit different. So normally I do Python stuff and I very rarely venture into JavaScript, but today I'm going to cover JavaScript a little bit more and I'm going to be using Node and Express to create the weather app that I've created in the last couple of videos. So I've already created this app in Django and I've created it in Flask, and in this video, I'm going to create it using Node and Express. So the same app, the same functionality, but I'm changing the language and the framework used. So I'm a little bit rusty with Express, so maybe some of the things I'll do are a bit out of date, but once I do get up to date, I'll probably create uh, newer videos covering some things in Express and make tutorials about it. So the first thing here is the template that I'll be using. Uh, it is just a static HTML file. It has the weather for my city, but this isn't the actual weather. It's just a placeholder and it has a form here. So this is going to be a multi-part video. It's going to be at least two parts, maybe three. In the first part, I'm going to get this weather to display for Las Vegas correctly from open weather map. And in the next video, I'll cover at least working with the database and if not, having the form as well, we'll see, maybe both. But for this video, I'll just get up to the point where I can query the API for the weather for my city, Las Vegas. So I'll be using the open weather map API. So open weather map, I believe is .org. And this API allows me to get the weather for my city. So as you can imagine, there's a bunch of weather related information inside this API, but I'm going to use the current weather data. So you can sign up for this and get the API key so you can follow along. It's pretty easy to sign up and use it, it's free. So the first thing I want to do is I want to actually set up my Express app. So like I said, I haven't done this in a while, but I should be able to get it because this app is going to be fairly straightforward. So the first thing I'll do is I'm going to bring in this file and I'm going to rename it to um, an EJS extension. So instead of HTML, I'll rename it to have EJS because that's the template engine that I'm going to use. So I'll save this as an EJS file and I'll get rid of the original template. Next, I want to put this in a directory called views so it gets picked up by the template engine when I go to render this. So I'll move it to views. And then the next thing I'll do is I will create a new file and we'll call this uh, server.js. So this is going to have all of my express code and this no longer applies because I changed directories. So let me open this up here. Okay, so that should be working. So inside of my directory, the first thing I want to do is npm init and I'm not going to like describe anything. Well, let's just say a weather app. That's a simple description. Entry point is going to be server.js, yes. Test command, no. Git repository, no. No keywords. I'll put myself as the author. License is the same and everything is okay. Now what I want to do is I want to install Express. So npm install and then Express. Express is the framework that I'm using to actually uh, serve the app. Node is the language in a sense, JavaScript and Express is the framework. I could do this in pure Node, but it's a little bit easier to do in Express. And if you're familiar with my Flask videos, Express is pretty similar to Flask in style. Of course, the syntax is different because this is JavaScript, not Python, but the ideas are very similar. And you'll see that in just a moment. So I have Express installed. So now what I want to do is I want to like import it. So create a variable called express and I'll require express. So just imported it. And then I'm going to create an app variable and I'm going to initialize express just like that. So very straightforward. And then what I want to do is I want to actually start the server. So app dot listen. And if I just pass in a port, so I'll pass in port 8,000, I will have a server running. So when I actually go to run this, so node and then server.js, uh, it's going to be running my server. Nothing displays here because I don't have anything there. But you know what, I'll install nodemon as well. So npm install nodemon, and that way this will refresh automatically every time I save something in the server.js file. So hopefully this just takes a second to install. 
This is a little bit slower than Express, but it should be done in just a second. And basically by using NodeBond, uh, it's going to detect any changes that I make to the code and restart the server. That way I don't have to, I don't have to stop the server and restart it automatically, or not automatically, but manually. NodeBond does it for me automatically. So it's installing right now. It's kind of a big package, so it is taking a lot longer than Express, but should be done momentarily. And while I wait for that, what I'll do is I'll set the view engine to EJS. So here I'll call app.set, and then I'll set the view engine to EJS. That way I can use the EJS syntax inside of my weather.ejs template. And another thing that I'll do is I will bring in the URL for the API. So this one is actually going to be uh, backticks because I want to replace something in the API and that is the actual city. So I'm just gonna copy the one I have already. And I'm going to use it here. And basically what this means is that it's going to take the city variable and update the string with that actual city variable. So if I create a city variable here, uh, city equals Las Vegas. That means that when URL gets called, it's going to take the city and replace it here in the string. So let's see if NodeMon has installed, it has. So now if I run NodeMon and then server.js, that should start my server. And now we see some information and it's watching my directory. So if I save it, it should say restarting due to changes, which it does. So now if I go to the page, it tells me cannot get slash. And the reason why I cannot get slash is because I don't have anything for slash, which is the index. So what I'll do now is I'll create the first route for my app, and that is going to be index. And it's actually going to be the only route since this app is so simple. So I'm going to use app and then get, because it's only going to take a get request for now. And then the callback function is going to have both the request and response in it. So now inside of here, what I want to do is I simply want to return that template that I have. So I'm going to call, uh, let's see, response, and then render, and then the name of my template. So since I have it in the views directory and it has an EJS extension, I can call it. I just need to pass in the name weather just like that. And now server should have restarted. And then I go here and it tells me I cannot find module EGS. So that's obviously a pretty easy fix. I just need to install it. So NPM install EGS. And this should be a little bit faster than NodeMon to install. And then once I run this again, I should be able to see my page if everything works correctly. So, so far I've had to install EGS, NodeMon, and Express. So now let's try NodeMon server.js again. And then if I refresh the page, I now can see the template that I have. So this is the actual template being rendered by my app. So if I were to pass it some data and replace some of these things with the actual data, I'd see it, but I haven't done that yet. So now what I want to do is I want to perform a request to the API so I can actually get the weather information. So to do that, I'm going to install something else with NPM. I'm going to install requests. And as you can imagine, a request is going to allow me to send a request to a particular URL. So just waiting for this to install. And while I wait, I will update the source. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to call requests. Well, actually I need to import it first. So we'll say var requests is equal to require and then requests. And then now that I have requests here, I can use it inside of my route. So requests, first argument is going to be the URL that I'm interested in. So this URL is the same URL here. It's going to perform a request to the open weather map API getting the weather for the city that I have specified right here, Las Vegas. Of course, this city is going to come from the database later, but for now, I'm just hard coding it as Las Vegas, so I can just test one thing at a time. So the next thing I need to do is add the callback function for requests, and the callback function has three parts, the error, the response, 
and the body. So just be careful when you're using this response to keep it separate from the response here. They're two separate things. So in my particular case, I only care about the body. So with the body, I'm going to first parse it as a JSON object. So JSON dot parse and then body. And I believe this is done installing. Yeah, it is. Okay, so I'm going to parse the body as a JSON object and I'll just call this, um, let's say, um, weather JSON. So now this is a JSON object that I can look into and get information out of. And what I'll do is I'll log this to the console so we can actually see it. So here I'll move the render inside of the request because I don't want the page to render before the request is done. So I'll put that in there. And now I'll start the server again and refresh the page and let's see what happens. So here on my console, I can see the data that was returned by the API. So it gives me a bunch of information. I'm only really concerned with the temperature, the description and the icon, but this is enough information to start with. So now, what I want to do is I want to actually pass that information over to the template. So the first thing I'll do is I'll create an object called weather. And inside of weather, I'm going to have a few keys. I'm going to have a city key. I'm going to have a temperature key. I'm going to have a description key. And finally, I'll have an icon key. And for the city, the city is going to be the city variable that I have. So I'll just pass city again. The temperature is going to be from the weather JSON. So it's going to be uh, weather JSON. And then it should be main, right? So yeah, main and then temp. So main temp. And I know I didn't round the weather or the temperature last time in the other two examples. So I'll just do that here. Math dot round. This way I don't have the decimals. The description is going to come from, let's see, weather, and then it's the first and only thing in this array, and there's an object in the array. So it's going to be weather JSON dot weather, and then the first item in that array, and then the description. And then the icon is going to be pretty much the same, except instead of description, it's going to be icon, just like that. So I'll add the colon back and I think I have everything there. And now I'll just put this in an envelope. So I'll call this new dictionary weather underscore data and I'll pass it to the template. So first it's going to have weather key, weather, weather. And this is just putting this object here inside of this object. And I'm going to pass it to the template. And to do that, I simply add it here as an argument. So weather data. Now with weather data being passed to the template, I can go ahead and actually use it inside of the template. So I'll go to my weather.ejs and I'll find what needs to be updated. So in my case, it's only three things. I need to update the city, which is the same as still Las Vegas, uh, the weather, the temperature, I should say, and then the description of the weather. So to do that, I'm going to use the typical EJS syntax, which is, uh, let's see. I don't know what this is called. We'll call this the less than symbol and then equal sign or actually percent and then equal sign and then the name of the variable. So inside the weather data, I have the weather and then the city is what I'm interested in. And then I close it out with percent and then the greater than sign. And then I'll do the same thing for the other things that need to be replaced. So the temperature is weather dot temperature. And then the description should be weather description. And finally, the icon. So the icon is this thing here. It's just a code. And it's going to update the image that gets retrieved from openweathermap.org. So percent equals and then weather.icon. Close that out. And that should be it. 
So now let's see the server should have restarted. And if I reload the app, I now see the city is the same, Las Vegas. The temperature is now 73 degrees, which is the actual temperature here. And then the description is clear sky, which is the weather right now. It's kind of nighttime right now. So, you know, it's the, I think that's the moon, um, but there's no clouds or anything. So that's the clear sky at nighttime, I think. It's kind of a confusing icon, but at least we see that we can get the weather from this. So this is where I want to stop. I was able to actually get the weather from the API using this, but I'm only able to do it for one city and one city that I actually hard code. What I'm going to do in the next video is I'm going to have multiple cities that come from the database. So instead of having just one city in the code, it's going to query the database for all the cities that exist, and then it's going to create these boxes for each city and display the weather for each city. So stay tuned for that video. I'll have the code for all the parts that I make for this series uh, in the description below when the series is done. So if you're watching the video the first day it comes out, you won't get the code. But if you wait a couple of days, then you'll be able to get all of the code. So you can look in the description for this video or for one of the subsequent videos. So if you have any questions about this video, you can leave a comment down below and I'll answer it. If you like this video, give, give me a thumbs up. And if you have subscribed to my channel already, please subscribe. So thank you for watching this video and I will talk to you next time.